Hey, 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 and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to continue with the Programming 101 series, and we are going to talk about operators. Um, you might ask yourself, what does it mean with operator? Well, there are basically a couple of operators you can use in more or less any programming language. Um, you know at least one category of them, and that are the... Um, arithmetic operators like plus, minus, um, divide, and so on, multiply. And there are a couple more categories, and we will be talking about four of them today because those are the ones that you will be using very, very regularly if you are programming. And I prepared a file again. Uh, as I said in the last episodes, you can find this code on GitHub. Uh, the link is in the description of the video. And I prepared um, notes again, so we can go along those and don't forget anything. And I would say let's just jump right in. So let's start with the arithmetic operators. Um, you should know them, well, most of them from your days in school. Um, so I'm going to write one example for every operator and well i mean uh, this is nothing new for you so i'm just um just for the sake of completeness i'm going to uh, show you what they are doing as well though it should be very obvious let's just say we have a number c which is equal to one plus one okay I'm not going to, well, um, we're going to print them to the console so we can see um, the result. C is, or oh, C equals C and a new line. Uh, let's run this. And you'll see C equals 2, which is 1 plus 1. So now let's change this to minus and run it again. C equals zero. That's fine as well. Um, now we have times. So I'm just going to say one times three or multiply, which is three. So let's divide this now as well. And let's see what happens. 1 by 3 is not 0. Like 1 divided by 3 is not 0. So what's happening here? Um, what's happening is we are like creating or we are assigning a decimal value to an integer field or like variable. And integers cannot hold, uh, um, um, cannot hold decimal places, so they are cut off. So what we have to do is we have to change this to a float value, which is a decimal type that can hold a decimal uh, spaces. And we have to change those values to float as well. Um, and you can do this via a neat shortcut. Just one point F tells the compiler that this is supposed to be a floating value. Um, and if we run this again, we should see a 0 0.333 now. The next operator is the modulus operator, which gives you the um, remainder of a um, division. So this has to be done with integer values. So we change this back to integer. We also receive an integer from it. And let's change this to 5 modulo three which should give us uh, two if i'm not mistaken and there we go so this gives you the remainder of a division um so now we have two more operators in the arithmetic category which are well which you won't find in every programming language but i find them quite neat and you and you have them in c plus plus they are called increment and decrement and you can do the following. Um, let's say we just assign this a static value, which is going to be 5. And now we print this. And now we say 
plus plus C. And we print it again. And let's see what happens. So the first C is 5, and after the increment, it's 6. Um, we can do this in the other direction as well, which would be a minus minus, which should now give us a 4. But there we go. And that's it already for the arithmetic operators. So next up are the logical operators. First, we're going to talk about the, the um, logical not, which is um, used to uh, negate logical values. So we talked about this in um, episode two, I think it was, about data types. Uh, that's the data type called Boolean. And this data type uh, can only hold two values, true and false, zero and one. Um, so I'm going to make two of those. They, like the first one is called B1. And I set, I set this to true. And the other one is called B2. And I set this one to false. So now I'm going to write a small if statement. We will talk about if statements in the next episode or the one after that. But for now, just take this as granted. Um, and I'm writing this because if you print a Boolean value to the console directly, you will not see true or false. You will see uh, um, zero and one. So um, I'm just going to write result or value is true in this case, and also a new line at the end. And copy this line, paste it here, and in this case, the value is false. So what happens in that if statement? Um, it says, if the value contained in B2 is true, then print the value, uh, like value is true, and if not, then print that it's false. And since a Boolean value can only hold true or false, we know that if it's not true, then it must be false. Um, if we run this, we will get value is false. And it says value is false. So um, if we are using the not operator now, and I say B2 is not false, means it should be true, right? As you can see, the value is true. So this operator just negates um, logical values, true or false. False is turned into true and true is turned into false. Next up is the logical AND. So you can um, evaluate these values on their own, like if B2 or if B1 or if not B1, um, that's fine. But you can also... Uh, um, connect them and then evaluate uh, like the result from that connection and there are two operators here where um, we can do this with and that is um, and and or so logical and and logical or let's start with the and it is denoted by a double a um, double a double ampersand like this, and then the second value. Um, and what is this? B1 is um, true, and B2 is not false, so it's true as well. Now this um, statement here is evaluated, and it will give like a result as well, so true or false. And for it to be true, both values have to be true. So if B1 is true, and b2 is true, then the entire statement is true, and we're going to run it into this uh, branch. If one of them is false, then let's say, or um, like let's just run this and we should see um, the, uh, like value is true in the console. Yep. If I remove this exclamation mark here, the logical not, then um, b2 will be false, and now this reads b1 is true and b2 is false 
So the result is false because um, they both have to be true. Let's run this and we will see value is false. Let's move on to the other one, uh, to the other operator, which is called OR and is denoted by two pipe symbols. Um, and this is called OR. And now only one of them has to be true because we say if B1 is true or B2 is true, go into this one, into this branch. And if one of them, uh, and, and we only go into this branch if both of them are false. So as soon as one of them is true, this expression evaluates to true and we run into this branch. And if it's um, not true, then we run into this branch. So since B1 is true, we should see in the console value is true. And that works. Now let's put them both to false and we should see value is false. There we go. Next up, uh, the relational or comparison operators. Let's actually put this up here. They are also called comparison operators. Um, they also evaluate to true and false, but they can be used on other data types than logical values. So let's remove uh, this again here. And um, Let's introduce two integer variables. One is called A and has the value one, and the other one is called B and has the value uh, five. Um, so if we say, or let's start with the equals or the, um, yeah, actually equals. Um, it is denoted by a double equal sign. So A equals equals, B, and you can see that the if accepts that, that means it evaluates into a uh, Boolean value, true or false. Um, this is going to be false because one is not five. I think it's actually quite useful to read these statements out loud if you're trying to understand them and also replace the variable names with the actual values. So if we are reading this, it goes if one equals five then print value is true. If not, or else, print value is false. So we should see a value is false now since one is not equal five. And value is false. If we change this to um, a five, then it should print value is true. The next operator is just the opposite of that. That's the not equals operator, it's uh, denoted by an exclamation mark and an equal sign, and it turns the, um, the thing around. It says if a is not b, is not equal b, then print value is true, and if not, then print value is false. So this statement is true if the two values are not equal. So we should see a value is false now. And if we now turn a back into one, we should print, um, we should see value is true. The next two operators are less than and greater than. So they are denoted by, you know them from school, um, those pointy brackets, or I'm not even sure how they are called. Uh, I'm just going to call them pointy brackets. This is less than, and this is greater than. So and they also evaluate into true. If A is less than B, it's true. And this would be if A is um, greater than B, it's true. And since one is not greater than, so if one is greater than B, you print value is true. If not, you print value is false. And since one is not greater than B, we should see A value is false. Yep. And the last two, operators are greater or equal and less or equal. Um, they are denoted by the corresponding bracket and an equal sign. This is less or equal and this is greater or equal. 
and this should print true since a is less or equal. If one is less or equal than b, value is true. If not, value is false. And since one is less or equal, it's less, we should see a value is true here. The last group of operators um, are the assignment operators. They are used to assign values to variables. And we have been using one of them all the time. That's the equal. But this is a real important difference between one equal sign and two equal signs. A equals B means that we assign the value of B to the, va um, to the variable A. This A is equal to B is a logical operator or, well, it evaluates into a, a, like into a logical expression, true or false, but it's one of the comparison operators, but they are very different. Let's write some like two print statements again. Uh, value is, and then we print uh, C, which is not yet in the code. Um, I'm going to add that in a second and I'm going to assign the value zero for now. I'm just going to duplicate that line for now. So we print, um, so C should be zero. So now we say C equals uh, B and the second print statement should, should then print a five. Yep. So the next one is plus equals. Um, not sure if this operator is existing or existent in, in, in like in every programming language, but at least Java and C and C++ have them. So if you write C plus, um, plus equals B, it's a combination. And it says C equals C plus B. So the value should still be five since uh, C is um, 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 zero. So if C is zero, this statement and this statement are pretty much the same. It should still print zero and five. But if we print, if we assign the value three to, um, to C, we will not see five now, we should see eight because C plus equals B means pretty much C equals C plus B. It's just like a shortcut for that. Um, so it should print eight. It should print three and eight. Yeah. Minus equals is the same, just the opposite direction. It's three minus five is minus two. Um, and then we have the same thing for um, multiplication, which should now be 15. Yeah, 3 times 5 is 15. And the um, um, division assignment operator, which will give us a 0, probably since it's an integer value. Yep. If we change this into float again, and we make be a float as well, we should get the proper floating point value, uh, which is uh, 0 0.6. And 3 divided by 5 should be 0 0.6. And that's it already for today. Um, we talked about those four categories, four groups of operators, um, and how you apply them, what they are doing, and how you use them. Um, Next week, or in, um, in the next episode, I will talk about if statements. Probably not only if statements, maybe also the switch statement, or maybe like, like just like a couple of um, control statements. That's how they are called, like the group of them. They're called um, control statements. And I was also thinking about making another series because I am also developing a game engine or I'm trying to, and the code is also on GitHub. You will find the link in this uh, video's description as well. And maybe I start making a YouTube series about that game engine. 
And if you want to join me in developing this engine, you can contact me. You find the, the information on the GitHub account. Um, link is in the description. If you like this uh, video, then um, well, leave a comment or um, subs um, subscribe to the channel. That would be much appreciated. And I hope you enjoyed this and see you next episode. Bye-bye.